created a nice little kit that I think answers to a lot of the issues that we're currently facing with electronics coding and learning about it, both for adults and for children. Uh, and also some not so big things, just being able to entertain ourselves and, and learn something as we do it. So we started thinking about how we learn these skills that are now becoming super prevalent in STEM related subjects. Algorithm, algorithmic uh, thinking, evaluation, decomposition of such. And the only two words that are more boring than this is three words. No, sorry, two words. Is a uh, featuring sting. Concept featuring sting will always be more boring than these four words, in my opinion. Uh, because when people see these four things, they believe that they will inevitably end up in a situation like this. They have lots of wires around them. They have um, a lot of trouble connecting devices, and they will actually learn very little in the process and have a lot of headaches. You will inevitably find bored students who will not be able to catch up with their peers and their main task during the classroom will be to find the ones that are smarter or not smarter than them, but the ones who understand things quicker than they do. And that doesn't that does that gives the teacher the impression that the student learns, but in the end you just realize that people just fall behind, you have disengagement from the classroom, and also a bit of a sense of hatred for the ones who do understand and realize that they get uh, all the information. So we decided to create, to create SAM. And I believe that if anything's interesting in this presentation is the product that we've built. And I think uh, the best thing to express is to give you a little demo. These SAMs come in little kits, like these ones. They're quite nice, uh, and they've got a very, very friendly way of getting to grips with electronics. We've got lots of little modules like these, and when you turn them on, they turn red, and they appear immediately on your interface. This is a little button, and this is a little light. These are things that we use every day in our homes, and also in electronics classrooms. I've just connected to my button, and I've dragged and dropped it on my interface. This now turns from red to blue to show me that it's connected, like this color over here. And when I press the button, the button on my interface also <laughs> presses. Now, to do the first exercise that we usually do in coding when we do project-based learning with Arduino, we generally connect a button to a light and we see if it works. Well, we decided to make that process as easy as possible. We understood that the students who will learn it, who will be the head of the classroom in electronics, We'll get it anyway. You could give them a Raspberry Pi, you could give them an Arduino, you could even give them C programming and they would understand. They're the ones you really won over and actually you have to spend little time educating because more often than not, this is a subject they excel in, they will educate themselves. But what about all the other ones? How about we give them early victories and make them understand that they too can learn? It's also something that's within their reach. And so we decided to give them early successes. So for instance, that little press is an understanding that whatever system I've got on there is working. To connect to a light, all I have to do is draw a line, nothing more. And now, magically, I've connected this button to this light. And so if I press this button, this light turns on. <laughs> now, even more magically, I can go all the way to the end of my classroom and start playing with my friend or my fellow student who's got this light and communicate with him, Morse code. If I want to go into the second example, if I want to change the color of that light, well, again, I too can do it. I cannot change the color of this light without any requirement of programming. If we go a bit deeper, what if we wanted to create a program that changed the color of the light every time I pressed? More difficult. Well, we thought, no, it shouldn't be. Let's just create a behavior. Coding functions are just behaviors, and they should be understood as such at the basic level. And so therefore, now, every time I press, my light turns different colors. So this is a basic demo, and then it's always more fun to make stuff move. So here I've got a little slider, and we have created a little card. It's also available in one of our 
uh, projects that we've got on the interface. And so now I will connect this car to my slider. And so with this slider here, I can create a remote control car that just moves on its own. I will now create the wheel system. So my car's on the ground. Sorry for the people at the back who can't see it. Uh, you're welcome to stand up. <laughs> and I'll just connect one of the two motors here. And so what I've done here is I've, I've connected one servo motor that's shown here on the interface. It's also explained. All these little devices are explained on the interface. I explain on the interface. So if I go over them, it tells me what they do and and what they are. And my second is almost here. Turn it on. It appears on my interface. And I'll connect it to my button. So now <coughs> it appears. One is green and one is um, used to be orange. I'll just make sure both of them go on the same in the same direction. So I'll just change the clockwise rotation. And now I'll connect them to this. And now I've just created a little remote control car. Say you want to teach them to both go backwards. You can then decide to just change the rotation of the wheels and it goes in a different direction. That's cool. It's kind of obvious. And it's a bit like a toy. I mean basically what I've done is I've created a system where a button commands uh, the wheels of a car. But let's try to get our students to think about something else. <coughs> what if I could use pressure? What if I could start making really, really cool relationships between electrons? What if the pressure I put between my fingers gave me enough energy to push the car? Well, as with anything with a sand kit, and we play with pressure, temperature, um, proximity and um, uh, and also light, I'm now connected to my pressure sensor. And so if I press lightly on my finger, it will go slowly. If I press hard, it's going to ramp up the energy. What if, <laughs> and you also teach how to repair cars. <laughs> so <clears throat> what if we started teaching conditions? So again, these were just connected devices. but. We're starting, I mean, I was talking about algorithmic thinking, evaluation, all these things. We have created all kinds of relationships here, such as Boolean logic, and even behaviors and conditions, that will allow any students to start understanding and come to grips with these actually quite complex things if they're written in a textbook. But if you feel them, if you can play with them, we believe it's much easier to understand. And so here I've just decided that my car should only turn on if I press at a value between 30 and 82. And so, there you go. So if I go anywhere below 30, it's not turning on. But as soon as I go past, it goes, it turns on. And I need to be under 82. So that's cool. You've managed to teach how to use pressure and condition values to turn on the car. But what if we also taught something and included something that's quite important to, to students these days? I'm 24 years old, so not too long ago I was a child and a teenager. And some things were quite important to me in, in my life as a teenager. Things like Twitter or Facebook, things that I would use every day. And for me there was quite a disconnect between what I would use in my everyday life and what was at school. And again, it was a source of disengagement. So what if we could do something cool? What if we could <coughs> ask Twitter to turn on this car? What if I could track Twitter, and every time someone talked about Kanye West, <laughs> the car would turn on. So, actually, I'll do, I'll do it from the screen so you can see that I'm not cheating. Uh, so, what if I say, sup, sup Kanye, and I just tweet it. <laughs> What if I could not only get information from the internet, but what if I could push information to the internet? What if I could learn to hack the devices that I really have? So, 
What if I could use my button and the camera on my screen <coughs> and tweet it, creating a security system in the scenario where I'm not, I'm not at home and I want to know who rings on the doorbell. And so all I have to do is drag and drop a few things. Hello, doorbell. And now, to send something off to Twitter, you can smile. Oh! There you go. So, can I press this button? I've been able to hack the camera on my screen, and after hanging out with Kanye, <laughs> we just sent a picture of all of us in the where I wish this could go full screen. <clears throat> and so these are cool things you can do with electronics, but what this could potentially lack is one, the ability to go into coding. So I've done a few things that are quite nice. They made me understand. I too can understand uh, coding electronics, but I really haven't got to the core. And and I think it's quite important to have a continuous experience. It's not going to buy something for school for yourself that allows you to do a few tricks, but then you have to give up and buy a whole new system to go further in your learning and further in your actions. And so we decided to go step by step. First connection, then connection with behaviors, connection with hacks, and then finally, connections with coding. Because at the end of the day, this is quite an important skill, uh, an important skill to learn. So this is a coding environment. I'm not sure how well you can see it. It's all JavaScript version. It's a little IDE that you can put in between modules. And if you look at the bottom right of my screen, you'll be able to see that as soon as I, as I put it in between the slider and the server motor, it told me what the input was, what was the output. And also described to me here what a slider is, what are the values that it accepts. It accepts a value from 0 to 100. Give me an example of how to code it. And same for the server. And so through this IDE, you can basically code up to anything. This allows you to code that to your code level after you've learned it, uh, these connections. I've got five minutes to do 95% of my talk because I love talking about what we've built. Um, and hopefully this will go quick. Five minutes, uh, um, including questions and answers? No, no, no. You won't get to ask questions. Um, <laughs> and so we built this. And we also put it in the hands of, uh, of students. And we've actually seen that it was quite a high level of game. Here, they actually built this car. So, I've, I mean, I'm not on the school, so I can plagiarize, and I don't care. Um, and so I took this up them. And actually, the kid over there, who's eight years old, built what was considered to be an engineering project. He took three proximity sensors, put them at the front of the car, and created a little simple code scenario that would tell the car to move every time it met a wall, so it would never bump against this wall. This is what I did in engineering school in second years in mechatronics. And I very much looked like this guy. Not this girl, but this guy. And it's quite fascinating to see that you can create a technology to empower kids and students. And further, as I explained, as this tool extends, also adults. We did workshops with the Royal College of Art, with visual, uh, with graphic designers, with material scientists, and uh, with product designers, people who usually would be scared of electronics. We gave them these tools, a context, a mission, and they took it in. And they started creating anything from twerk bots, bots that would twerk at the sound of music, it was quite amusing, to a uh, to delightful skirt that would turn as fast as the person was dancing. Again, with the same ingredients, with the same little modules. We worked with a college, a London College of Fashion to create other, uh, other garments, fuel and sugar. So basically, sound is awesome. I wouldn't be doing it and, and, and otherwise. Uh, and we. I've been happy to work with kids in education, also designers and lobbyists, because education doesn't really stop at school. We are now facing teachers who need to learn as well what electronics and coding is all about. Adults who need to know about electronics and coding to create new products, new innovations. And using the same tool for us is an extremely important thing. The same way you use a computer. For education in particular, we've decided to be very, very strict about what we actually teach. Because it's all good and well to create something fun if, at the end of the day, teachers can't actually fulfill what they need to fulfill and, and what they need to teach and be able to tell, well, perhaps the headmaster or parents what they've actually taught, I think it would be a really empty offering. So 
we devise these kits, but I'll show you on the interface in a second, that through project-based learning and through these kits, you learn how to make robots or cars. And the focus is around connectivity, engineering, coding, music architecture, circuits, uh, gaming, and it all ends with self-reflection and assessment. If we have time, I'll show you how we do that as well. <clears throat> and so this is how we try to turn these four words and the very bad joke I made at the beginning into something fun, into something that people would enjoy. With the packaging that you get in each kit, you can then start creating on the app. Also, we're, uh, we're quite digital except for the packaging. We, we would rather have something dynamic that the teacher can track. And so all the exercises are on the app. You can start going through very, very easy motions to start learning how to create and how to embed technology in, inside your creation. And we've got different uh, kits and different propositions that we get, going from a Twitter cube to a little robot to a car to a weather station. The self-reflection assessment happens on the community. In order to build and push your project, you go through a vigorous, what we call rigorous um, form that is very reminiscent of what I used to write in engineering school but it's actually quite important in order to transmit information inside a school. Basically, write an abstract and uh, a title, abstract or executive summary, very short description of what you've made, introduction, material used, uh, conclusion, and further developments. Of course, if they're said in these words, you have kids running and screaming, but if you give them a, a, a nice enough experience, they'll, need, they'll learn these core skills of reporting in a nice environment, and they'll be able to carry on. So we've defined the key stages in which we learn. Uh, these are just words that I'm happy to go on afterwards. And built a nice community in which people can pull, uh, put their, uh, their, cool, um, uh, their cool projects. These are some of the fun projects that we've got. Uh, we had a key selling campaign uh, where we reached 125,000 pounds and we're in a bunch of press. Um, thanks a lot for your attention. Before I finish, what I would like to show you, if I still have time, is how we embed everything in the app. And so the project that I just talked about are all within the app. So here's my little man cube, and here's how I go about learning how to create it. This is something that the teacher can track. He can see exactly where the students are falling short, where they don't understand things, and he can always pinpoint the area of focus and help. Um, and then to push a project on the community, let me just see a few of my projects here. Um, so I can just load a project if I, just, if I want to push on the community. This is the very, very scary engineering-like form, which is actually quite nice. You put information, pictures, figures, you put the title, materials used, you tag it, and you put the instructions so that someone else in your class can do it, or so that your teacher can see how you've built it. And then you can go on and share. This was Sam. I'm happy to answer any questions.